I'm gonna show you how to create a flat look for your iOS and Android action or navigation bar. This is not documented for some reason, and I don't know why, but it's pretty cool. Coming up in this video. Hey everybody, it's Alex from nativescripting.com. I think we should rename console to console. Welcome back. Please consider subscribing to this channel. It'll really help me out to create more YouTube videos like this one. Just hit on that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of the tips, tricks, and tutorials that we do in NativeScript. And if you want to learn a lot more about NativeScript, consider joining one of our courses on nativescripting.com. All right, so a quick tip for you today, the flat look for your action bars. This is not in the tutorials. This is not in documentation. What is going on? I had to find this out by digging through the APIs and I saw this in the APIs and I thought, what the heck is this? Let's check this out. And it's a pretty cool effect. It makes your navigation or action bar flat. So it doesn't have an elevation or a shadow under it or even a visible line on iOS. Let's take a look at how to do that right now. All right, we're gonna use an application that I already have created and I'm working on at the moment for the update to the NativeScript Core Pro course. It doesn't matter if you're using Core though, or View or Angular, the action bar has the same properties on it. So let's take a look at the action bar here. On iOS, normally the action bar is a little bit transparent by default. So you can see the people's faces going through it if I'm just scrolling. It's kind of uh, not see-through, but it has some transparency to it. So you see things behind it. And the color doesn't come through exactly the way I specify it because it's taking into account the white background as well. And also on iOS, you have a little strip right under the action bar. I'm gonna turn off the color so you can see it a little bit better. But let's talk about Android. On Android, there is no transparency on the action bar. It's a solid color. That's why it looks a little bit different. And there is definitely a shadow right under the action bar. So how do you control this? Well, there is a property that's completely undocumented as of this video, maybe it's gonna get documented soon, and it's called the flat property on the action bar. All right, let's take a look at this action bar. Here's the one that I'm looking at. In order to see the default, I'm just gonna remove the action bar styling so that we can see the default coloring. Okay, let's take a look at that. So here they are. All right, on iOS, you can see the trans translucency. That's the word I'm looking for, translucency, okay? And then you can see the little line right under the action bar. There may be a little shadow there too, I'm not so sure. But on Android, the shadow is way more pronounced. You can definitely see that shadow right there. So one property we can set on the action bar is the flat property. This will flatten it out. It'll remove that height or elevation. By default, this is set to false, but if you set it to true, right here and we take a look at that look at that there is no little line here there is no color on the action bar it's just a default color now on android you do have a little grayish color to it but it's still flat there is no line or shadow there which is great for certain styling scenarios one more thing on ios is there is no more transparency so if you wanted the flat look you get the flat look there is no transparency but this enables really cool animation scenarios which I'll go into in another video. Just wanted to introduce the flat look to you. Let's remove it from here. And there is another way to apply it. So here is the action bar. I'm putting the color back in. All right. And you can apply it right here in the CSS. Why do you ask we can apply it in the CSS? It's not a CSS property. Well, in NativeScript, you're actually able to put NativeScript specific properties that have to do with widgets in CSS and it'll still be read and picked up. You'll get this message from the editor. It's not recognizing that flat property because it's an unknown CSS property, but it will still work. And I talk more about this in the NativeScript styling course on nativescripting.com if you wanna dig more into that. All right, so that's a really cool tip I thought I'd share with you. And we're gonna come back to this flat property a little bit later when we do some neat action bar animations. So flat action bar, have you used this before? Let me know down in the comments below if you have or not, because it's pretty cool and I just recently found out about it. All right, let's read some of your comments. Recently, I posted this video about Google Login and how to use Google Login in your NativeScript applications with OAuth 2. 
Mohammed Maher says, thank you so much for your videos. You're welcome, Mohammed. Mohammed Adil Saeed says, hey, Alex, you know what the developer needs actually? Can you just make a video from Microsoft Azure login video with Azure portal? Well, Mohammed, the setup for this is actually pretty similar to the way I just showed you in that video, in the Google login video. But the rest of the setup is really on the Microsoft side. I have a course on native scripting about that and how to set up all the details about Microsoft login. And the course is Enterprise Auth in NativeScript. You can find that on nativescripting.com. And if you download the NativeScript Sidekick, there's a link in there on how to get that course for free. Hopefully that helps you out and thanks for the comment. A Bugs Bunny, welcome back, Bugs Bunny. Hi, Alexander, thanks a lot for your video, great job. Thanks, Bugs Bunny. And Salem Yaslam says, I think we should rename console to console. I don't know what that means, but sure, let's do it. Talk of the Town says, Facebook login, I think, is more relevant. Okay, some people like Facebook login, some people like Google login, some people like Microsoft login. If it's more relevant in your situation to use Facebook login, I actually have a video on that also on my channel, so check that out as well. But using the NativeScript OAuth 2 plugin is pretty much the same for Google login or Facebook login or Microsoft login or your own custom provider login. Fairs Fair says, thanks, great video. What am I supposed to do when I have synced with the website auth for Google and other providers? Is it going to be a backend API service which will create users and their providers in DB? Well, yeah, if you're gonna be managing your own database of profiles, then yeah, you can use the OAuth 2 plugin to get the authorization and get an access token. And then you would query the relevant API to get the profile data from that service and then store that data in your own database. I get a thank you from this person. Rafael Nazarco says, could you make a tutorial about connecting to MySQL database in NativeScript? Mean by you can introduce ORM, for example, MySQL2 or SQLize. You know, Rafael, before you told me about SQLize, I didn't know about it. It's very new, it just came out in March apparently. And I really like the idea of that. I'm gonna have to look into that. I haven't used it yet or any other ORM with NativeScript because I figured that's another layer that you have to worry about and maintain. So there are definitely benefits to using an ORM and I understand what those are and I will look into it, but I haven't played with it yet. Thanks for that suggestion though. Corsaro Nero says, hi Alex, you're the number one in your old plugins there was the possibility to use it for generic provider different from Google or Facebook or Microsoft. Is this option still valid for the new plugin OAuth 2? Thank you. Yes, Corsaro, you can still use your own custom provider in the NativeScript OAuth 2 plugin. And I just showed the example of how to set that up in the documentation in the readme file. So check that out, it's in there. There's actually a sample repo that does that too. Michael Kimenez says, thanks. You're welcome, Michael. Rakesh Jirasi says, thanks, Alex. Can you please add a video on how to store confidential information within NativeScript application, which can be found after decompiling APK? For example, common credentials to hit a REST web service to get data. Rakesh, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. You won't be able to protect any sensitive information on your app because this is a client app. If anybody gets a hold of your phone, they'll be able to decompile it, deconstruct it, break into it, root it, whatever your case may be, they'll be able to get into it and get your data. You can encrypt it, you can make it more difficult for them to get to the device, but it's not impossible. Now, if you don't want the bad elements to get access to your security keys or your secret keys, you should store that on your own backend server and then talk to your backend server, which is then gonna proxy calls to your API with those keys. That's the most secure way I can think of doing it is if you keep your secret information on your own backend server and not in the NativeScript application. I have a lot more details about this in the NativeScript security course. Securing NativeScript applications is called on nativescripting.com. And I go into a bunch of details about how to talk to the server, how to do a proxy specifically for this example. So check that out if you haven't already. And Matthew Marlin says, hi, thanks for the video. How am I supposed to manage the state of the logged in user? after redirecting back after the login. All state in the application seems to be lost. Yes, the callback is executed, but I'm not able to detect if the user is logged in already or not. Well, this is not a stateful kind of uh, plugin. The plugin's responsibility is only to get you an access token, and that's it, it's done after that. Your job as an application developer is to maintain the state of the logged in user, and you can do that using the expiration of the auth token, which you can send back from the authorization server along with the token. I talk deeply about this topic in the Securing Native Script Applications course as well. So it's really your responsibility to maintain the state. All right, folks, thanks a lot for your comments, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.